because she's been previously wounded. And the fight flight, the amygdala has adrenaline, ru adrenaline running in her body to run, but she's afraid to run. She doesn't know what to do. So she's paralyzed. And that tells us that the amygdala being activated should have only been activated in God's principles after puberty when the child has the foundations to see the whole picture and respond to the body. But when the child has been wounded early in childhood and it's not been resolved, that capacitor of electricity and the thalamus makes the decision itself. The child doesn't make the decision this is a trauma. The thalamus makes the decision. And that's what tells me that the thalamus is the hard drive of the brain and all of God's software that is in the brain is in the thalamus. And if I don't pull down the strongholds and bring captive the imaginations, the thalamus is going to work on its own independently of my desires and my dreams and my visions and my discipline. Why? Because I've been wounded in the age of directives and have never moved to the age of decision. So when Paul says, bring down the strongholds, bring captive the imaginations, and think upon things that are good, that requires an adult who has grown up into the age of decision. So what happens then is if I've been wounded in childhood through any of these five things, rejection, incest, molestation, emotional, physical abuse, if I've been wounded in childhood, that wound, the earliest wound, has literally seared a single neuronal connector from the thalamus to the amygdala, and the amygdala is the gland that sets off the adrenaline. When we get into trouble, we react. We react instantly because we've been wired to react as a child, and we're rested in development, and we we're not a person of choice. We've never moved from 13 to the age we are now in, in common knowledge at 40, 50, 60 years of age. We're still chronologically 40, 50, 60 years of age or anything over 13 basically. But emotionally we're stuck at the point of our earliest wound. So what happens then is the thalamus has, has now burnt the image of this into the memory bank and anything that looks like the first trauma, second trauma, third trauma, anything that even remotely looks like it's going to be a trauma, the thalamus causes us to react. And it sends a signal, and we, we can fly off the, I mean, we can, we can escalate zero to 60 in a millisecond because the thalamus says, this is familiar territory. This is how things were when I was wounded the last time. And so what we do with life skills, when we understand what we're dealing with here, what we do in life skills is to help us to see that the thalamus is unrestrained and we become reactive, so we start delaying all of our responses. Even good responses we learn to delay. So if something wonderful happens, we're not gushing immediately, we're thinking it through and then we thank people for the blessings and the good things, but also when something triggers us, we stop and take a time out and think it through and realize that this is not the trauma of which my thalamus is starting to react to. And the more we delay our responses in these areas, the more the brain gets the message, aha, there's somebody else disciplining me. Some, this person's in control of themselves. And see, we have no potential to control anybody else or any circumstances or any situations. The only potential we have is self-control. And the scripture is very clear on that. It's self-control. But when we've been wounded, we literally, the, 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 the senses bring in all the information and the thalamus makes the decision and I automatically, because I have this indelibly burned firing wire going from, from my thalamus to my amygdala, I automatically react and will react for the rest of my life. It's just bizarre how this works. I want to show us here that this is again the thalamus the hippocampus, it comes back around, and the amygdala. And what happens is the limbic system runs our life if we have never grown up. 
The limbic system pushes reactive behaviors into the cognitive centers of the brain. A person can be thinking and not have a memory come in to, to the mind, and the frontal lobe is glowing warm orange, or if I'm really thinking, the frontal lobe is almost red, and the thalamus and the amygdala is blue because there's no activity there. But the moment, within a millisecond, that somebody says something that triggers the wounds of childhood, the thalamus goes red, white, hot, and the amygdala goes white, hot, and the frontal thinking lobes go dark blue. Because that's survival. See, that's survival. So the limbic system of the brain is what pushes our behavior. So when I say the wounds of childhood drive our behavior, that's exactly what we're talking about. My woundedness will cause me to see a perception that's not true, but I become reactive in every way. So I have women in my life that I know that say, well, I, I don't know if I can listen to you. I can't do this. I can't do that because you remind me of my father. So I remind them of their father, and what happens is they react as if I was their father. So how do we deal with this trigger? You go back in, in a quiet place and say, Paul is not my father. But I've literally, I was up in Vancouver Island, and a woman, after I shared part of my story, started, she came up at break and started beating on me till I had little black and blue marks because she was hitting me with her fists. And I says, I, you know, after we got her settled down, I says, why did you do this? And she says, because I could. I, was a, I represented the safest man in her life. So she did it because she could, but I triggered her by whatever. And she reacted to the trigger, not to reality.